please be seated. Yes, Mr. Kajic, please continue. Thank you. Good morning, Excellencies. Good morning to all. Now, uh, as a, the defense, I feel handicapped after the plea made by Mr. Robinson. I shall appear even more as an amateur. But of course, uh, I shall be adducing the facts, and you will appreciate uh, the lack of form. I should like to uh, turn to what the prosecutor is uh, saying about Sarevo in its final brief as having been established in Sarevo. The prosecution bases its case about Sarevo on the theory that there existed a Serbian policy of producing terror intimidating the citizens of Sarajevo. And uh, it uh, infers uh, such conclusions from a number of sources, from several quarters, uh, and from an insider. The first and most often quoted sources are international observers, journalists, and UNPRA for uh, members and members of other organizations. The second source are Muslim investigators of the police of Bosnia and Herzegovina who investigate. globally speaking, contested uh, the very uh, existence of units of the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the existence of heavy weaponry of the first corps of the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina in the city itself, or the strengths and numbers of those forces representing the first corps of the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina which had the 80,000 combatants, of whom uh, about 40 or 50,000, the 12th Division, which was always in the city, and the, uh, uh, the rest are on the outer ring as something inconsequential and negligible and unimportant. This made it possible for the prosecution to create the impression th that there was no war as if there were no army there, as if war had not been declared on Serbs, and as if the Serbs had come from somewhere and uh, laid siege to Sarajevo with forces that had nothing to do whatsoever with Sarajevo, whereas it was quite simple and easy to establish that that was not the case, that both the inhabitants of Sarajevo Everybody was just guarding their own neighborhood, their own settlements, uh, whereas uh, and the Serbs did not have any ambitions of taking the city, taking the Muslim section of the city, and the Muslims did have that ambition to capture the Serbian part of the city. And uh, when one reads or hears um, what the prosecution holds against uh, the Serbs, uh, charges the Serbs with in terms of their conduct surrounding Sarajevo, well, that is uh, more like an ideological and political uh, pasquil. Uh, uh, shame on you. You open fire. You 
sh was shooting while uh, neglecting uh, the laws of war, the legitimate, uh, and customs of war, the legitimate v rights of peoples, creating an impression that everything was just one-sided, uh, one was uh, unmotivated, and everything was unjustified. International representatives uh, uh, invoked uh, the, the statements of which the prosecution invokes, uh, I actually venture to characterize the Serbian strategy plans and other confidential information which they could not even dream of. They were nowhere near uh, the decision making of uh, the Army of Republika Srpska or the local or state or municipal organs of Republika Srpska. Nowhere where decisions were made were they present uh, or knew anything about it, but uh, they drew their superficial conclusions mainly uh, on the basis of some superficial observation of the battlefront in Sarajevo, very limited views uh, with distorted uh, uh, and they, uh, uh, conclusions that they sat in their shelters uh, and wherever they were in their positions, receiving information from their Muslim interpreters and in other ways. As a rule, they never saw the heavy weaponry in Sarajevo. As a rule, they never registered the thousands of shells which the units of the first corps of the army of Bosnia and Herzegovina fired from the city targeting the Serbian section of the city. As a rule, they observed everything which was uh, done from hill to hill uh, across the Sarajevo Valley. Uh, that was always a Serb fire, although not a single foot uh, was there where there was only a Serbian soldier without having a, a Croat or a Muslim a Croat opposite him, a trench opposite trench. Everything which came from the hill was fired by the Serbs, although the number of salient features which are near, the elevations which are near to Sarajevo were held by the army of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Serbs held those which were farther away. They would just uh, register fire in response, which the Serbs were firing to respond, and they characterized it as they saw fit. You will see one witness said, I know, I concluded that it was a random fire because it was not concentrated fire. It was just one or two shells. Another witness again said, uh, I know that the purpose was to terrorize because uh, the fire was concentrated. However, we have uh, uh, even uh, as many as two daily reports of the Sarajevo Romania court to the main staff. Uh, these are all coded documents, uh, confidential secret documents, in which no one from the Sarajevo Romania court would actually dare lie to the main staff and certainly not uh, intend any of its content for any pro propaganda purposes. Uh, the question of the uh, response of the conduct uh, in firing uh, the uh, expenditure of ammunition uh, lists uh, in the reports of the uh, SRK uh, uh, makes possible just a single and one conclusion, which is that the Sarajevo Romania Corps comported itself uh, with a maximum degree of responsibility up to the level, the limits of uh, sustainability of endurance and uh, refrained from responding. Here, we have heard that there was a contradiction in the uh, testimony and documents of General Milosevic. Uh, allegedly, he said that uh, these uh, were uncontrolled elements, uh, and that must have been the SRK. If they were uncontrolled elements, that just could not have been the Sarajevo-Romania Corps. It simply was not, is not the Sarajevo-Romania Corps. 
Thus, international observers simply did not know at a single point in time the disposition of forces, of the respective forces in Sarajevo and their <coughs> respective strengths, their numbers. Their firepower. They never counted the shells that fell on Serbian territory. They never observed or noticed who started first, but they did, in fact. And Harlan says that at a certain uh, period, the Muslims uh, violated the truce, uh, the ceasefire agreement, 318 times. If some one of them was asked, like Mr. Doyle, if they knew where the disposition was of the Muslim forces, how did they know who opened fire? He said, I don't know. I didn't know. It was not my obligation to know where the respective armies were because his role was a different a diplomatic one. Then uh, he should not have been asked about uh, these matters. Someone else, in fact, should have been asked about that. Uh, to briefly touch upon the uh, Muslim investigators and policemen as the second source of information and of documents uh, for the prosecution case in respect of the Sarajevo segment. In, in addition to their uh, purported uh, lack of information uh, of the Muslim uh, investigators and policemen about the strength and the disposition of their first uh, corps, their own army in Sarajevo. During the investigation, they uh, demonstrated exceptional lack of objectivity and the lack of professionalism in their work when they conducted on-site investigations of alleged incidents. Uh, the witnesses uh, uh, avoided direct and compromising questions uh, and they, uh, the excuse was that this was not within the uh, re uh, remit uh, 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 evidence was distorted. The maps of Sarajevo were shown uh, upside down. They were turned. Uh, the azimuth, uh, the north direction would be uh, changed by 90 degrees. Uh, in order to show that a uh, specific projectile had been fired from the Serbian side. We remember the sniping incidents in Nehru Street where a girl, a young woman, was killed uh, through a darkened window at night. And the investigator said, We did not do the deflection according to the horizontal plane, but it was quite obvious by the vertical plane that the bullet uh, actually uh, went up by 70 centimeters from 2.5 uh, uh, meters. Uh, so the upward traje trajectory was easy to determine. And this, on that basis, they determined that this was uh, fired by the Serbs. Namely, these investigators, uh, according in their own admission, actually, did not work the way they worked in peacetime. They did not prepare and conduct their investigations and complete the documentation as they would have done otherwise. I must have spoken very quickly because uh, the transcript does not reflect my words faithfully. So uh, lines 17 and on. This girl was shot, but she was not visible. It was a night, and the uh, window was shut. The blinds were down. It was, she was not visible. This uh, bullet which hit her had an upward trajectory, and we know that an upward trajectory uh, by uh, along the 
vertical line we do know, but not along the horizontal plane. The deflection should have been uh, along the horizontal plane if it had been fired from the Serbian side at least 45 degrees or more because the Serbian positions were obliquely positioned vis-a-vis -vis that window. Uh, one investigates by uh, coming to that window and uh, looking at the Serbian positions and just saying that is where the bullet came from. The witnesses who were inhabitants of uh, Sarajevo identically uh, as other groups of prosecutorial witnesses uh, allege that they did not know anything about the hundreds and thousands of uh, soldiers who passed by them uh, daily or going to their uh, shifts, uh, m conducting maneuvers, uh, uh, hauling weapons, shooting, they did not know, they did not see them shooting from the skyscrapers, from the uh, hospitals, museums, schools. Uh, they did not see 275 staffs of the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina in this very narrow urban core strip of Sarajevo. So many brigades, battalions, companies, uh, how many can there be that they have 275 staffs and command posts? And they created the impression and actually testified uh, as if uh, it had only been a unilateral barbarian uh, assault of the Serbs, uh, of the Serbian army, uh, which was composed of their fellow citizens without any reason, without any cause. This is how the international representatives comported themselves. Uh, Mr. General Michael Rose, uh, on page uh, 7308, line 223, and page 7309, confirmed uh, that the identification of the firing point uh, the position from which the mortar is fired was very imprecise, uh, very imprecise size, generally speaking, in a very large majority of cases. And that uh, different uh, views, different possibilities have to be taken into consideration for any further investigation to be conducted. General Rose testified in the Karadzic case on transcript page 7335, saying that Ganic organized his secret police to open sniper fire at a tram. I'm going to read this out in English. Sniped so that the angle of the shot matched the direction from the Serb lines. Doc, uh, Svedok tvrdi da su... The witness says that Amprofor did not have its own intelligence service and an information gathering service and there's therefore they did not carry out investigations also he has said that they received reports from sector south of Amprefor and he confirms that it is his conviction that at that time Ganic organized his secret police and sniped at the tram as for this situation Every incident that is ascribed to the Serb army is something that the prosecution has to prove. It's not the defense that has to prove whose sniper shooter that was. It is the prosecution that has to prove what happened, if there is such a possibility. And if this possibility was established, that that is what they were doing. And we heard that from other witnesses, too, that the Sheve, Larks, and others did that 
General Rose in response to the question put by this defense. Answered that the only way in which it can be established with certainty what the source of mortar fire was, was a radar, and there wasn't one there at the time. The witness said that on page 3755 to 376. General Rose rejected all allegations that the United Nations allowed the Muslim army to use their positions in order to fire at the Serbs. However, there is an Ampafor document of the 8th of November, 1994, that is D-696. It registers the fact that the Muslim forces were observed as they used or abused UN insignia, helmets, white vehicles, in order to create an impression, or rather to operate more easily and to pass off as the UN. This testimony is on page 7464. Mr. Kajic, could you Give us again the reference of G General Rose testifying that Ganich is in relation to Ganich's sniping. Yes, Your Excellency, with pleasure. The reference I have is numbers two and three. So that is the testimony of the Karadzic case, page 7335 lines 6 through 19, and page 7335, line 24, and on page 36 to line 17. What I have in front of me is this. It's your question that saying, do you remember that Ayub Ganich had organized secret police that sniped the trams in Sarajevo and all those incidents were supposed to be assigned to the Serbian side. The Serbs were to be blamed for all those. That, you, that was your question. And I have his answer, which says, well, as I explained before, we had no intelligence gathering cap capability, so I wouldn't be, have been at the time able to confirm or deny such an allegation and I certainly can't do so today. Do you have more than that? Uh, we'll check that until the break. But we are convinced that it was confirmed by General Rose, that he confirmed this about the tricks that we asked him about. Maybe he didn't know at that point in time, but later on he learned about that. Prosecutor Gustafsson said that General Rose did not confirm, as we said in our paragraph 2313 of our final brief, that Amperfor smuggled weapons for the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina. In that paragraph, we relied on document D688, page 4 which was shown to Rose on page 7, 4, 2, 5, and 2, 6. And we didn't even say that it was Rose who said that. However, we proved to him and to the prosecution that Amprafor, the UNHCR, and the other so-called humanitarian organizations smuggled, of course it was individuals, but that doesn't change the fact, smuggled weapons 
and in other ways helped the army of Bosnia-Herzegovina. They were therefore partial and they took part in the conflict in that way. This is also proven in other paragraphs of our final brief. For example, paragraph 1329, 2335, 2986, and the documents that our final brief relies on. That is D2168, D2178, D3575, D. 3302, D3302, D3303, D3303, D3306, D3287, D2128, D3308, D4145, on page 3, D2336, D2512, D2513, D2605, D2606. These are but a few examples, to be more specific, 18 examples of different cases during the war that show that what General Rose said was not accurate. He either did not know about it or he could not allow himself to say the truth. Uh, uh. So this document was put to the witness, a document that shows that the Muslim soldiers were masked in Amprafor uniforms, that they used Amprafor insignia, that they painted their vehicles white, and they wore Amprafor helmets. The testimony of General Rose. I mean, what I said about the masking. That was on page 7466 from line 21 to 7466, line 13. The Bosnian government, it says there in the documents, would stop that when protests were lodged. General Rose claimed that Amprafor did not know whether there were any violations of the arms embargo in Bosnia and Herzegovina because they did not have an intelligence service. 15 years after that, it was clear that there was an active program of violating the arms embargo And this was done by various countries throughout the world. And General Rose confirmed that on page 7476, line, lines 3 to 15. In response to a question put by the defense, the witness confirmed that the Western countries had a total lack of understanding of the nature of the conflict. Also that they had a strategy of confusion in terms of having the situation resolved. That is on pages 7322, lines 16 through 19. The trial chamber can draw its own conclusions as to what the consequences are for the warring parties, especially the Serb side, and how important the testimony of officials from these countries 
is these countries that did not have enough knowledge or enough understanding, that did not understand the nature of the conflict sufficiently. In response to Karadzic's question, the witness, General Rose, stated that his view of UNMOS, UN military observers, whose reports or testimony are a significant stronghold of the prosecution case against Karadzic and the generals and soldiers of the Serb army. On page 7294, from line 5 to 19, he confirmed that they did not have the necessary experience to view and understand the fighting from a tactical point of view. Their reports were often unreliable, and they had a direct line of communication with New York. And they could be susceptible to propaganda of international institutions and the international media. His own interview was shown to Rose, in which he said that he believed that Ganich had organized his secret police to snipe at trams. He stated that on page T. That interview was shown to General Rose, and 7335 is the page where this is referred to, and the interview was 1D2475. It hasn't been admitted, but General Rose did not deny giving that interview. Your Excellency, that is an answer to your question as to what the reference pertains to, the reference concerning Ganich and his snipers. Please continue. In response to Dr. Karadzic's question, the witness, General Rose, said that it could not be established beyond any doubt or with precision from where the sniper shots had come because Proper investigations were not carried out, and it was impossible to establish, beyond a reasonable doubt, who it was that was shooting. Francis Roy Thomas, yet another representative of the UN force, on page 6832, confirmed that it was impossible to establish from where a shell arrived in Markale on the 5th of February, 1994. D-634 describes the activity of the 101st Motorized Brigade of the First Corps of the Army of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Later on, there is another description that near that platoon, there were a few other platoons, mortar platoons, than the Second Vitishka Motorized Brigade. Francis Roy Thomas Govorio na 
Mr. Thomas, Francis Roy Thomas, spoke about that on page 6909. And a brigade artillery group of the 5th Motorized Brigade existed as well. 6910 is the page where he refers to that. And that is also recorded in document D634. Major Tim, Gospodin Thomas. However, Mr. Thomas was not aware of the kind of fire that the 102nd Motorized Brigade could have used. 6912 is the page reference, again in relation to the same document, D634. The second motorized brigade was around the PTT building where the UN headquarters was. And it was visible to one and all. Each and every piece of weaponry could be seen as well. Mr. Thomas testified on page 6835, stating that mortar projectiles at that time in Sarajevo could have been fired from any side. And then he claims that any larger caliber would have to be fired from the Serb side, allegedly because the Muslims did not have large calibers in town. First of all, in town the Muslims did indeed have large calibers, and that could be seen in document D-634. Secondly, the Muslim army could reach the Serb part of Sarajevo from other positions as well by firing large calibers from Igman and from the positions of the 16th Division. On the outer ring around Sarajevo, the outer confrontation line, Thomas identified the victims of the incidents that were shown to him in morgues and medical institutions. He was not able to differentiate among people who were killed on the front line and people who died in other ways. And he had no sources that would have enabled him to do so. We will direct the chamber to a document that shows how many soldiers were killed in Sarajevo. That is, first of all, concerning the medical institutions and mortuaries, uh, that was said on page 6860. And when he said that he was not able to differentiate between people who died in different ways, that was on page 6861. Using the services of regular military observers, they established the cause of death. He said that on page 6861. The military observers of the United Nations made their judgments and conclusions interpreting from the context. They erred and their errors were in the differentiation between combatants and civilians. They were not able to distinguish even among the living people who was a soldier and who was a civilian. 
that's on page 6863. His testimony, therefore, is flawed and lacks weight, uh, not because it was intentional, but because his knowledge was limited. Another witness described random, indiscriminate fire from large caliber weapons as fire that was not concentrated on a particular zone with the intent of targeting a particular military objective. That witness was Richard Mole. All this is to be found on page 5818 and 5819, lines 1 to 19. And on the previous page, it was lines 20 to 25. The fire was indirect, imprecise, and as such, it was not concentrated from that type of weapon, and it was impossible to determine a pattern of targeting. So this fire can be qualified as indiscriminate, but we've heard testimony of commanders from Ozrenska Street and documents where they report to the core command saying we are under fire, we are suffering great losses, but we then fired a shell to shut them down. Every s military prosecutor and every military judge knows how artillery is used. In this office of the prosecutor, I have not seen any person of that profile. In these circumstances, fire can be used. General Karavelic uh, said, and I thought he would come to testify, said that the SRK used artillery fire just as the first corps of the BIA H, to neutralize the firing position, you can use artillery to shut down, to destroy, to harass a firing position of the enemy. It all depends on whether the fire is proportionate. Uh, we will equally see that another witness, uh, cited by Ms. Gustafsson, said that he could recognize random fire intended to terrorize by the fact that it was concentrated, which is completely contrary to what Mole says. So we see there are two criteria for determining wrong use of artillery by the Sarajevo Romania Corps. Such indirect conclusions were used by the prosecution to contend th that there had been indiscriminate and terrorizing artillery fire against the city, maybe for ordinary purposes. Uh, this can be done, but in every judicial system, including in our country, higher standards would apply. The defense has also shown that the Muslims targeted their own section of the city, and they put it to the witness, Mole, and Mole responded that the observers felt that could have been the case, but they did not have enough evidence. And he says on page 5886, lines 3 through 11, that they did not 
have the capability to carry out a satisfactory forensic investigation concerning the Muslims the prosecution does not even require a satisfactory forensic investigation but when they deal with chit chat on the telephone that can be used against the Serbs that is useful and it is used Ms. Gustafsson contended there was no evidence in the reports of the Sarajevo Romania Corps that the army of Bosnia Herzegovina fired at their own civilians. Maybe the defense referred to the wrong documents, but the following documents uh, speak to this D2796. States, the Army of Bosnia-Herzegovina is firing with RPGs and infantry weapons from positions above Brieka at Bashtarshia and their own positions with the intention of blaming the Serbs. In document 2797, all these are D documents. D2797 and D2796. In a report of the Sarajevo Romania Corps to the Higher Command, it is said that the BH Army is opening artillery fire at the city, and the UN Command in order to ascribe that fire to the Serbs. Yes, I recall me tragic, wow. I said machine gun fire. It was wrongly recorded as artillery fire. This report refers to machine gun fire. In addition, the prosecution did not mention a word about KV-86, who was part of the presidential security detail, and he heard and saw with his own eyes when he's at Begovic, and his leadership were making plans for massacres of their own population, as described in our final brief paragraph 1977 and 29. Sorry, 2099. There is evidence of that, and this evidence was available to the prosecution. To continue with Lieutenant Colonel Mole, on page 5886, he confirmed his statement from 1997. When he said that the Muslim side was using Sarajevo in order to maintain the victim status. On page 5887, he confirmed that in cross-examination. Officer Hanbury, in his testimony in the Galic case, shared the same views, and that was confirmed on page 5886, lines 18 through 25. There were common areas where Muslims could assemble, such as marketplaces or lines or queues for humanitarian aid were a frequent target
that the Muslims used to fire at their own people that was said on page 5889, lines 1 through 15. Lieutenant Colonel Moll, in his evidence, said he believed that Muslims gained advantage by causing suffering in Sarajevo, which won them sympathy from others. And that is why they kept their own civilians locked in Sarajevo. It was for that purpose. He said that on page 5889 from seven line 17 through 22. He also confirmed on page 5890 that there were not enough groups of animals to investigate all the shells, all, all possible fire all incidents in that area. Nor was it their mission to judge what was proper and what was not around the confrontation line. That's on page 5852. Lieutenant Colonel Moll confirmed that they did not conduct investigations in the police sense of the word, nor did they investigate responsibility for individual incidents. That was because ceasefires never held and it was very difficult under the circumstances of such military activity to establish anything. So their reports cannot be used as evidence in a criminal trial. His testimony is to be found on page 5852. It's confirmed thus that they did not conduct investigations that would be usable in a criminal trial and they did not investigate responsibility for particular incidents of fire. There were things that Lieutenant Colonel Mole heard about only and things they nev that never found their way into ANMO reports. He confirmed that on page 5884. He says on page 5895 and 5896 that it was impossible to record all activity of heavy weapons. It was irrelevant, he says, and useless to try to concentrate on a particular incident, such as targeting of UN vehicles or to determine the origin of fire. A materiali vojnih posmatrača and the material provided by military observers 
are a source of many charges concerning Sarajevo. As for observation posts, their number was limited by the number of officers and the Anmos complain they did not have enough personnel. That's on page 5810. In a certain number of daily entries, there were large differences between the number of shells incoming and outgoing from Sarajevo on one hand, and the number of outgoing shells from Sarajevo falling on the Serbian side on the other. That was on page 5815. In cross-examination, Lieutenant Colonel Moll confirmed that they were not in a position to place their observers on Mount Igman. And the imprecision and inaccuracy in recording the number of shells is due partly to the fact that there was no observation of outgoing fire from Mount Igman. Lieutenant Colonel Moll admitted that Mount Igman was important geographically and militarily, and he agreed that the Muslim artillery at Mount Igman had Serbian zones in Sarajevo, Nejarici, Ote, Silija within their range, together with Butmir, Sokolovic, Kolonia, and Hrasnica, which were Muslim controlled areas in Sarajevo. That was confirmed on page 5846. So, as a result of the majority of the reports, Five eight four six is the reference. As a result of uh, the majority of reports which uh, contain qualifications, so the effect that in analyzing uh, these reports, one must uh, bear in mind that all heavy weapons uh, of both sides were not observed. This he confirmed on page 5847. And that uh, these reports were actually defective, were flawed precisely because not all sources of fire were observed. When asked further about the accuracy of the reporting, Lieutenant Colonel Moll said that the statistics uh, which was seen in the reports was an incorrect representation of the events. It was an attempt uh, to initiate a level of activity. The observers The observers were preparing this for uh, the, or actually this is in respect of the UN observers. They were just uh, observing a limited, limited uh, number of events and had a limited number of observation posts. Uh, so from the testimony of Lieutenant Colonel Moll, we can see for what purposes uh, their reports could be used. They could be only used to uh, actually have a hint of the level of the activity that they performed. Uh, they can say nothing about the justification or the activity or the sources of fire or the proportions of the respective activities of heavy weaponry in Sarajevo. This, he says on page 5, 
And if it is uh, time for our break, Your Honours. I do have to apologize because I am obviously, for the accuracy of the interpretation, I should speak uh, slow, more slowly, but uh, that, of course, consumes much of my time. Judge, can you s scroll back your transcript? If yes, if you could take a look, page 41, line 15. KV86 should read KW586. Correct? Yes, you're quite right, Your Honor. This is a protected witness, uh, a protected witness, and the number is uh, correct. We'll have a break for 20 minutes and resume at 11.43. All rise, vive le vie.